the former North Carolina legend and the longtime Georgetown head coach. You've had a lot of fantastic moments in sports. What's the greatest moment? I mean, what started everything? You don't say know. that. <laughs> don't say. Don't say the shot against you. Yeah, that was the greatest moment <laughs> because I think that took me from a. If I had any doubts about playing on college level or playing with the big guys, you know, that shot gave me the confidence that I belonged where I was. You know, and that it was, you know, if you put your mind to doing whatever you want to do, you know, good things can happen. You know, so before anything else happened with Michael Jordan outside of that that game and you know, against you guys. That shot gave me the idea that I could be better than what people think, and I can, you know, surpass any expectations that I may have for myself. Let me turn it. What's your greatest disappointment in sports? I haven't had any disappointments. I mean, you know, sports is a, is, is is a tool that teaches, you know, and it teaches you bad things. It can also teach you good things. It's how you perceive those things. I've looked at every experience that I've had, negative and positive, and, and taken that as a positive. You know, if I wouldn't change anything because I think it would alter some of the other things that happened. You know, so when I look back, I can't say that I've had any bad things happen. Sure, I mean, you don't want bad things to happen, but you deal with bad things. You can't have good or you know, without bad. When you look back at your career, particularly in the NBA, when you started off in the NBA, you did a lot of exceptional things yourself, individually. Right. And then later on, 96, 98, you guys start really winning championships. Evaluate the difference in the two. Well, I even go back further. I mean, you come out of college, you got a lot of gifted talent and some knowledge from your coach, you know. And you, when you get to the pros, you have to blend that knowledge as well as your individual talent. And you don't know where you stand. You know, you go into, I came into the league thinking I was the last on the totem pole. That was my thinking. I didn't come in thinking I was on top. So I had to work my way past all my teammates and they're all guys within the league to prove and establish myself as a basketball player. So, you know, I was gifted. I was talented. You know, I knew how to play the game. I didn't know how to play the game on the professional level. I had to mm -hmm. learn that. And it took some years of learning, watching Magic Johnson, watching Larry Bird. Let them see how they can play, you know, impact games when they're not scoring, or you know they score four points, they still make the you know the big plays down the stretch. These are things that you learn in in, in the process of, of maturing in this league, you know. And as I watch, I began to adapt and I became more complete. You know, I, I didn't, I wasn't one dimensional. The one thing I never wanted to be was one dimensional. You know, everyone saw me as just a scorer, a one-on-one -on -one player, but I knew I was better than that. I came from a great program at North Carolina to teach you how to do more than just one thing. You know, so I spent the rest of my career trying to evolve as a player. And when our team got to a point where we can contend, I had to assume the leadership role. I had to, you know, other guys had to step forward. And then when we got to that point where we were winning, all the bases and all the foundations had been built. You know, now it's just about it. can you mentally get yourself back each time to challenge yourself more so than the opponent, but yourself to be that hungry each and every time you step on the court. That took some evol evolving over the course of my career. And when I got to that point, I had no doubts that I couldn't win any time I stepped on the court or that I couldn't inspire people to win no matter how many times I stepped on the court. I tell people that from my observation of you, you're one of the most competitive individuals that I've ever seen. I would imagine if you were playing jacks with somebody, <laughs> you'd want to kill them. Uh, have you ever met anyone that you felt was as competitive as you are? Um, no. I just feel that you know my, my competitive drive is, is far greater than anyone else that I've met. You know, I think that I thrive on that. I think that's my biggest motivation in life. You know, is to 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 compete. You know, find different competitions and certain things in life, and 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 try to overcome that. You know, be it positive or negative. But uh, I have yet to meet someone who is as competitive as me. You know, and I just feel that much confident about my competitive drive. I want to ask you some true and false questions. Just three. Just three. Okay. Just three. Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player ever. False. Why? Because I didn't play against you know all the great players prior to me, and I had those other players to influence my game. I mean that's. I mean it's, it's a great honor. Don't get me wrong, but I love to play against Jerry West to determine if I was a better guard than him or Oscar Robinson. But we'll never know. Michael Jordan 
Had he stayed with baseball, would be playing in the big leagues now. I believe that. Uh, a lot of people may not, but I believe that. And I, I gave, for that short amount of time, I gave the dedication to the game of baseball uh, a true effort. You know, I wasn't you know, down, I wasn't there making money. I wasn't trying to endorse any product. You know, I was truly there for the love of the game. You know, I was up at 6 o'clock with bloody blisters all over my hand, just trying to, trying to show that I could play this game. I grew up playing this game. I was, you know, I, I loved baseball. And at the time that I stepped away, was a time where you know I was being asked to be uh, being thrown into a you know situation that involved you know baseball strikes and things of that nature, and that was never my intent. You know, so I kind of walked away before you know before I was thrust into that whole event. Michael Jordan will absolutely never play in another NBA game after this season. That's that's a fact. Uh, I will not play in another NBA game. You know, I would play basketball. I'm glad you said NBA game. But I, I mean, I got kids who love the game of basketball. I got friends who love to talk trash about me. I got a lot of young kids who love to compete against me at my camp. I'm still going to play the game of basketball. But from an NBA standpoint, that's it. This is the, the last year. you something, Mike. A lot of kids copy you, and a lot of things that you did were things that people had never seen before. Did you ever practice those things, that creativity, that self-expression that you did, some of those shots you made? No, I never did. I mean, um, you know, obviously when you're, as a kid, you want to count down five, four, three, two, one to make the <laughs> game winning shot, yes, but I mean, in terms of the creativeness, I think you know, you've seen it, you know, it has happened in, in situations where the defense dictates what your reaction may be. But then you, once you do it once, you know you have a gift of talent to create. You know, in any other situation, you try to alter, you try to change. But all it was was the expansion of Elgin Baylor, Dr. J, all the guys who was creative before you. And, and I grew up watching them, so the vision was there. It's just the, the creativity expanded with my talent. What motivates you, fear or the feeling of wanting to conquer or be successful? What motivates me is the unknown. No one knows. You know, they can all speculate, but no one really knows. And you know, when you look at my career from you know, high school all the way up through you know, to the pros, no one knew what Michael Jordan was capable of. You know, and myself, I didn't know. You know, but that, I didn't let that stop me. You know, and I, I let that motivate me more so than anything that, you know, as long as it's unknown, that means I have a chance. You know, and that's the way I've pers I pursued my whole career. Have, have you ever gone on the court and been afraid? No, I've never been afraid. I mean, obviously you're nervous, mm -hmm. but afraid means you're not confident in your skills. I have total confidence in my skills, so I'm not afraid. Of all the rivalries which you've had, what is, is the toughest one you've ever had as an individual? As an individual, it was probably the Detroit Pistons. Uh -huh. You know, when, when we were trying to get over that hump, you know, I mean, we had the battle. Uh, I, I wouldn't say fear, but intimidation, you know, because to some extent it got away from clean basketball, you know, the basketball that you grew up playing. <laughs> it got to more where, you know, yes, one hard foul could end your career, basically. And you got to overcome that intimidation factor to keep going to the basket, keep taking that shot, keep aggressively attacking them, you know. And I think as much as it was a battle, I mean, it was once we accomplished that, it was unbelievable success. And no one else could challenge us that way, I didn't think, as a team or even as individuals, to a point where, you know, it bothered us. You know, that was good for us. That was good for me to go through that. And it only made me a tougher player. How about from a personal standpoint? All players have one player you play against that you say, hey, I enjoy playing against this guy and I'm looking forward